everyone, this is Yami, your Latina next door. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I post about home decor and DIY tutorials on my channel every week. And recently, we bought a cute little fixer upper on two and a half acres of land, and we're bringing you through all of the updating room by room. Now, if you have been following along, you know that we just painted our sunroom. And I'll go ahead and link to that video above if you have not seen it yet, so you can check it out. Our next project on the list was to redo the floors. Now for this video, I have partnered with Rust-Oleum and we are very excited to share a very inexpensive and easy way to update your indoor floors. Now I'm not sure if you've noticed, but painting your floors has become a very popular trend and I don't see it going anywhere anytime soon. However, up until now, there hasn't been really a product made for indoor floor painting. Of course, Rust-Oleum saw this trend and decided to make a product specifically for painting indoor floors, whether they're vinyl, laminate, wood, even ceramic tile. The product is Rock Solid Home, and it's a two-step process for painting interior floors. It's a product that's fairly new and already found in some Home Depot stores, but soon to be available in all of them. Now, I was lucky enough to be able to test this paint for you guys in the sunroom in our new home. So I'm sure you guys are anxious to see what I ended up doing and how it turned out. So without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and get started and I will talk more about the product throughout the process. So this is what the sunroom looked like after painting the walls. Of course, there was still some prepping to do to the floors before applying the paint. Perhaps the most important step in this entire process is cleaning your floors. First, I swept off any debris and then I mopped the entire floor. After that, you need to give them a really good scrub clean. Rustonium recommends using a degreaser and cleaner like crud cutter. It helps remove anything that has been caked up on your floors for a long time. Now I sprayed it, scrubbed it, and then I would come back with a nice clean cloth and I would wipe everything down a couple of times with clean water. You want to make sure you remove all dirt as well as the cleaning agent so that it doesn't leave any residue where the paint won't be able to penetrate. You will be surprised at how much nastiness will come off your floors using this method. And luckily I had the Latino engineer come in and pull away the dirty water and bring me fresh water so I can continue cleaning without any interruptions. Also knee pads will be your best friends during this process so make sure you wear some. All right, so here are the floors, nice and squeaky clean and we are ready for some paint. Now there is no need to sand or prime before applying this paint and we are gonna do step one, which is the base coat. And I decided to use the color French gray for my base. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pour the base coat paint into this container. Um, we've had this for quite some time and what we like to do is we actually like to buy these inserts that go right into it. Since they're a little flimsy to use on their own, we like having this frame. And what's nice about it is that once you're done, you can just discard this one and you still have this holding shape and lasting a long time without a lot of paint on it. So we'll make sure to link all of these products below and for the edges, because we're gonna have to trim all of the edges. It's my specialty. Um, we're gonna be using this little paint pail right here that I like to have on my hand. And then we're, we have inserts as well that go right in here. That way we can re keep reusing this because as you can see, we've used this a lot. <laughs> and I am going to use my trusty two and a half inch angled sash brush that I love using for trimming the edges. So this is what I'm going to use for the edges. Did you guys know that I have my very own paint shaking machine? <laughs> shaky, shaky. Now this paint is super thick as you will see and it does have a little bit of a stronger smell than regular paint so we do advise using a mask while applying this. The first thing I did was do all of the borders of the room. You can use painter's tape in order to make straight lines along the borders 
or if you're like me and have cut a lot of rooms, you probably have it down by now. So you can do it just freehand like I did here. Rock Solid's base coat is supposed to be a one coat application and I was actually very iffy about this because I have never seen a paint go on with just one coat and get full coverage. But let me tell you guys, as you guys can see here, this paint is amazing there is absolutely no tile pattern coming through as you can see right here this paint is full coverage from the get-go of course if you were using a plain white color for your base coat you would need two for that but for all of their tinted colors like this french gray that i used all you need is one application Then it was time to roll the paint on. Now, Rust-Oleum recommends using a roller with 3 8 of an inch nap to apply your base coat. And the coverage is just as good with a roller as you see here. We definitely recommend taking your time when rolling, that way you get into all the nooks and crannies like those grout lines that you see. We also recommend not wearing any shoes during this application so that you don't bring in any extra debris while you're painting on your floors. Of course, that last tip was just from your Latina. Another tip is when you need to apply more paint onto your roller, when you put it back on the floor, apply it on the unpainted portion of your floor and then work it back over the area where you already painted. This allows for a smoother finish all across. And that tip came from your Latino engineer. You also want to make sure you work on one end of the room and work your way out of it. That way you don't get stuck anywhere with paint surrounding you and then you can't get out. <laughs> And this is what those floors look like after they were dry. That one coat looks pretty darn amazing. Now you can leave your floors like this. And Rust-Oleum recommends waiting at least six hours for the base coat to dry before applying the top coat. Of course, I was not done. I ordered some stencils because I wanted the floors to look like cement tile. And I got this beautiful pattern. I'll link to it in the description box below if you guys want to check it out. And I wanted to make a pattern on the floor to give the floors more interest. For this, you will need a small roller tray, some gloves, some painter's tape, a damp towel in case you guys have any mess ups, a mask, as well as a four inch foam roller and a paper plate. And I used another base coat for this application, this time in the color white. I do have a more in-depth tutorial on how to stencil and I'll link to it above so that you guys can check it out if you're interested. But basically I centered my stencil on the tile. I apply paint to my roller, remove any excess on the paper plate and then start applying it through the stencil. Make sure you take your time during this so there's no bleed over. And then as soon as you're done painting, remove the stencil. And then you begin to work your way through the rest of the floor. I usually like to go in every other pattern, letting the stencil before dry, before doing anything in between them. However, because my stencil sizes weren't as large as the tile, I decided to go ahead with the checkered pattern. And I really liked it because it didn't make the floor too busy. And here is what the floors look like after all the stenciling was complete. Of course, there was still one more step left and that was to seal the floors. So then it was on to step two of the process, which is the top coat. And I selected a matte finish. And just like the base coat, I started with all the borders using my angled sash brush. Once all the corners and edges were done, then we went on to rolling the top coat. Rust-Oleum recommends using a 1 4th of an inch nap roller for this process and it is just as easy an application as the base coat as you can see it goes on a little milky but it will dry clear the top coat will need to cure for a period of 24 hours before walking on it 
but if you plan on putting furniture on your floors, you will need to let it cure a total of 72 hours before putting any furniture on the floors. This ensures a durability of the painted floors and I assure you it's worth the wait because the results are pretty amazing. So I really hope you enjoyed the transformation of my son room floors. I was really blown away by the way this paint adhered to this tile and the fact that I only needed one coat to cover up those ugly outdated tiles. I'd like to thank Rustoleum for partnering with me on this video and if you have any more questions about this product, please make sure to list them in the comments below. Definitely check out your local Home Depot to see if they are carrying it yet, and if not, you can always go to the Rustoleum website and find out where they are supplying it in a store near you. I will have links in my description box to the products as well as the Rustoleum website where you guys can get more information about Rock Solid Home. I am really happy with how my floors came out. If you like them too, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe because there's still more to come in this sunroom transformation. So I hope to see you guys in the next video. Until then, adios.